Okay, good afternoon again, everybody. It's Bart from GiantScaleNews.com. Uh, just a quick video to wrap up the work we've done on the firewall of our Giant Scale uh, RC build, our low budget build. It's a 73 inch Lanier Edge 540. It's probably 10, maybe 12 years old. And I had it, sold it, bought it back, and now I'm mounting a Zenoa G26 to it. I've already shown in the thread the work I've done to the firewall uh, to get it ready for the engine. And now we're just going to touch on a couple of details about the mounting and then that's going to be it. So uh, first off, looking at the motor, the uh, prop hub centered in the opening of the cowling. It's off a little bit. It's not perfectly centered. Uh, it's actually off to the aircraft left side a little bit. Uh, I'm not really going to worry about that. I'm going to fly it first. Uh, we're going to see once we fly it whether it's pulling a le little left, uh, pulling up or down or whatever. Uh, we're going to adjust the mounting of the engine make sure the airplane's flying exactly right and then we'll look again at this see if the cowl needs to be moved a little bit to center everything behind the spinner and uh, we'll take care of it then if you've bought an airplane local you know the owner you knew that it flew really well and if you put in the same motor that that person had and you found that it was off a little bit I might use the cowl as a guide for where the motor needs to be or I would just talk to the previous owner to see uh, how it was set up, how it was mounted, so that you can get it the same way. Um, but buying an airplane like this, maybe on the internet or something where you don't know what engine they had, you don't know uh, whether it was really dialed in or not, just get the motor as close as you think it ought to be, then fly it, tweak it, and then worry about getting the cowl mounted behind the spinner just right. Okay, now taking the cowling off. Four screws to hold the cowl on. We'll take them off real quick and just look at a couple things. This cowl is actually mounted. Uh, it's pretty neat the way the original builder did it using silicon tubing on the 440 uh, screws that hold the cowl on. There's a little bit of uh, silicon tubing with a flat washer, and what happens is the hole in the cowl where this goes is just big enough for the silicon tubing to go through and then once you start to tighten it down the washer compresses the silicon and that's what holds the cowl in place so the hard surface of the screw the hard material of the screw is not touching the soft material of the cowl anywhere so the holes are not all elongated and, um, and out of round from vibration the way they would be if you just had a small hole and that hole came into contact with the uh, with the screw itself so little silicon tubing on your mounting screw you let it compress as it tightens up and it holds the cowl in place great and it's not really uh, eroding away the holes in the cowl so let's take this off we'll show you this real quick there's really nothing earth shattering about how I mounted this uh, just used five millimeter screws or bolts and we have fender washers on the back side of the firewall and anytime you have a nut and bolt going through wood those bearing surfaces should have large diameter washers also known as uh, fender washers and that's to keep the wood from crushing small or normal diameter washers are good when they're bearing against metal but when you have wood which can crush under the the pressure of the the nut being tightened on the bolt you want to have a large diameter washer which is called a fender washer so pretty normal stuff I've got a nye rod here for the throttle uh, Viton tubing the yellow stuff for fuel the ignition module is attached to the bottom side of the, the motor box using zip ties. There's a layer of foam in between the module and the wood of the, the motor box. Uh, the zip tie is a pretty heavy duty, uh, pretty heavy gauge zip tie. The wire for the uh, spark plug is held in place using zip ties attached to the zip tie for the uh, engine or the ignition module. And anytime you're doing this, you want wires to be supported. You don't want long lengths of wires tucked inside somewhere where they could flop around. Uh, the reason being is this wire vibrates, this point where it's bending will start to harden. So the copper inside the wire will start to harden. And what will happen is as it hardens, that's called cold working, as it hardens it will crack and break. So the reason seemingly uh, flexible wires will actually break is that that copper can harden from all the vibration. So it will crack and that's it. So Try to make sure your wires are supported every so often. You don't want a whole length of wire flopping around succumbing to vibration. All right, and then 
as far as the rest of the motor goes, you could maybe see it in this view that the motor is actually centered in the back on this offset line. And we talked about that in the thread. There's an offset line so that when you mount the motor with some right thrust, uh, the front of the motor actually centers back on the center line of the airplane. And that's where you want it to center in the cowl. Uh, all these things, you do it as best you can with the first try. Then you fly it. You see how it does. You shim it a little bit if you have to so everything goes the way you want it to go. All right, now as far as the cowl goes, uh, there's some extra holes here. Uh, this had a Sato 180 in it, and I'm going to show you in another video how we can patch this all up with fiberglass and make it look like new, so that the only holes we'll have are the holes we need for this engine. And that's just another way of taking a low-cost airplane, making it look pretty nice and getting a lot of fun out of it. So, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, if there's anything I've said that's wrong, um, by all means, point it out in the thread. I'm not above uh, being corrected about stuff that I say. And uh, we're going to take a break from this. The weather's going down the tubes. We're going to start working on this, which is uh, product review slash build thread. It's a PAU 27% uh, Pitts Challenger. I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, watch for that. Thanks for watching this. We'll see you at the site.